boy. Is what it is, but it's life, isn't it? It's life. Yeah, it's good. Roll with the punches, as they say. Fully booked. In the studs, in the studs, in the studs. With, Re- with um, French, Pocker, myself, Mace. Big Ray, Big Ray Ray, Big Ray and his nephew, Big Ray Ray, 63 blood clique percent, how you mean? And about six or seven cans of ginger beer. We're waved, we're getting on it. Uh, nice. It's a nice evening, nice settings. And you're in season three, season four. You're in season four, and we're reviewing the book, The Silent Art of Not Giving a F. Boop, CK. You could just say by it, Mark bro. Monson. It's like, I'm not giving a fuck. He swears throughout the book anyway, so <laughs> let's just, just say it. let's just get it out there. No, no, yeah, let's just blase with it. It's like, I'm not giving a fuck. Um, yeah, with no further ado, one of the man them in the studs. Um, chapter one, don't try. Okay. Uh, did you guys read the bit? And well, I'll I'll give you an excerpt and then we'll go from there. But I did find it quite interesting. The genius in the Bukowski's work was not in over, overcoming unbelievable odds or developing himself into a shining literary light. It was the opposite. It was his simple ability to be completely and functionally honest with himself, especially the worst parts of himself, and to share his feelings without hesitation or doubt, which is on page three. Um, jumping into it quickly, can you accidentally own your truth or is it always intentional? So can you repeat that again? I'm just gonna... Can you accidentally own your truth or is it always intentional? So in the in the case of the genius of Bukowski, do you recall the story? Or you yeah, do, yeah. Can you yeah. give me a little bit of backdrop? Sorry. So Bukowski. this guy... Oh, hold on. Right. So Sorry. Guy that... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a guy that wanted to be something. What did he want to he be? He wanted to be a writer, basically. I don't know. And he was I a know. drunk. Uh, yeah. But he was a drunk and he, yeah. he never gave a shit. But no, basically, he didn't get an opportunity. Yeah, the publishers ignored him, blah, blah, blah. Drove him to drink. I don't know if he drove him to drink. He drove him to drink for years. And he ended up being... Was it in the post office or something? Something to the post? I don't even know. He may have worked in the post office. Post office. Yeah, anyway. For, no, no one was given an opportunity. Mm. And I think that someone just... Yeah, someone come a publisher gave, sh- took a liking to him and yeah. gave him a chance, and basically, he done quite well. He sold quite a lot of books, yeah. but he was still on this kind of fuckery thing. He was where amazing. he didn't literally give a fuck, and he was going to like the award ceremonies, still drunk, yeah. cussing people out, and do you know what I mean. But he was he basically got what he wanted in terms of he wanted to be a well known writer, yeah. and get paid lots of money for it, which he did. But yeah. there was no kind of intentional drive to yeah, do it. Yeah, it was yeah, more yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost happened by accident so yeah I got you I got you that's hence the question right with all that being said repeat your question after it will drop the penny will drop with me now can you, you accidentally own your truth or is it always intentional can you accident well this story proves you can accidentally own it yeah. but what, so I'm going to relate this to some sports stars I f- but if you tell if you ask man like if you ask Anthony Joshua if you ask like these are legends in my well Anthony's still going but he will be a legend in my book mm-hmm. I asked man like Linford Christie when I was growing up I like I like was in awe of Linford Christie mm-hmm. yeah if you ask like these football like even like going back old school now Dwight York and Daley Atkinson and Dean Saunders and these footballers there if you ask like the real Andy the Andy sc- Andy Cobb <laughs> <laughs> if you ask the old school Ronaldo all these guys yeah, you're telling me that they intentionally didn't want to be a success and be the best of what they could be. There's no way. They didn't accidentally fall into that. There's there's years of effort and training that's gone into that. Of course. That. They might have, don't get it wrong. Don't get me twisted. They might have been 13 and knocking about with some friends or running up and down on Acton High Street. So we're giving our where we are now, West London. But anyway, mm. and then someone's randomly spotted them and that's an accidental thing. Mm. And then they've brought them in and they've said, you could be good at this. And then they focused. Yeah. But, after that, the drive comes from within. Yeah, Do you get yeah, what I'm absolutely. saying? That's intentional. Yeah. So with that being said, Mr. Bukowski, he intentionally wanted to be a writer at the beginning. Yeah. He accidentally fell into the, fell into um, becoming a, a world-renowned writer for selling cop- millions of copies, but he intentionally wanted to be that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. So I don't know if you can accidentally... I think you can accidentally fall into, into a career and maybe accidentally fall into... 
You can fall into a career at work. I think it, when you're talking about the elite five or ten percent, I don't think there's an accident in that. Yeah, maybe you get introduced or someone notices your potential, mm. but after that, it's everything's intentional. If you want to be the one of the top in your in your field, so to speak. So, would you agree in the obviously it's still early doors? We've got still got to yeah, go yeah, through yeah. the book, but yeah. at this moment in time, um, just off the back of that story, would yeah. you say and asking that question? Would you say? Don't try is a good method of going about things. No, because I know that I'm, this book's good because it, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it raises yeah, a lot of debate. Yeah, 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 it changes your thoughts. It's a really good and, book. And yeah, I disagree with that about this don't try thing. I'm sorry. It, de- it depends. No, it, de- it depends what it is. But I and I understand where he's coming from because he Mark Manson like doesn't it. want you to overwhelm yourself with the feeling that you have to be this or do this yeah. to fulfill what is meant to be life. Yeah. And otherwise it will swallow you up and you end up in the dark pits of, you know, alcoholism and all the rest yeah, of drug yeah, abuse. Numb, numb so I get it. But no, I do not agree with don't try. I'm sorry. And, and, and yeah, P, sorry. I'm honest, I don't, there's, there's not too much I can say. I think you you answered that question quite well. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think you can accidentally... Sorry, just repeat the question one more time so I can... Can you accidentally own your truth or is it always intentional? I think your truth may dawn on you. Mm. And that might come across as an accident, but I mean... That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it might dawn on you, but apart from that, yeah. I don't believe so. And when I mean dawn on you, it might be your, you may potentially... I don't want to say you're living a lie, but maybe potentially actually living a lie. There's a few people in the book who are living a lie. Yeah. And right then, one day it dawns on you as to actually, you know what, this is who I am, and unfortunately I need to do this or that and the third in order to turn my life around. But yeah. no, I don't think you can accidentally earn your truth. I think, I think you nailed on her, Mason, in regards to... Um, as to being in the top five, ten percent, I don't think you can accidentally fall into that. No, not at all. Not at all. There's only so much talent um, that you can have, but then that has to be nurtured, and that's via effort. That's via you concentrating and focusing. Yes, accidentally you might be discovered or your talent might be noticed, but after that, there's no accident, in my opinion. Sorry, and obviously that was a question you put together, all right? Yeah. So, cool. So, like, nah. I mean, I think he was just sloppy. <laughs> Let's be honest. He was sloppy, and he had, and he no, and he has personality. All right, he has he has personality, and I mm. think that personality warmed that personality. Like someone warmed to his personality, and yeah. someone said, "You know what? I'm taking a chance on this geezer." All yeah. right, and then from there, he became successful. But I mean, he might have had some of the traits. Maybe he might have. He had some of the traits to be successful. I mean, I'm not even funny. I mean, the thing about basket- he had he had some form of talent. He, and had, he did, of course. He obviously, had talent for him to do it. So, and he was a writer. It wasn't like he just suddenly started writing it so for me my answer would be it is always intentional okay cool like i do think it's intentional even even as subtle as it may be in, in this turn of bukowski how he's kind of gone up obviously he hasn't intentionally gone about it mm. in the conventional way mm-hmm. but he's got to his goal so you're saying yeah. French is trying to throw trick questions at the man then to start off the new season yeah? <laughs> maybe I don't know man. maybe I don't know you've got to watch French now yeah <laughs> gang business alright so moving slightly down on page 3 uh, he does make a point which I do I do find and I think you mentioned it before it's, he does have compelling arguments with, within the book as he goes mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. but he does mention self-improvement and success often occur together but that doesn't necessarily mean they're the same thing then another part, ironically, this fixation on the positive, on what's better, what's superior, only serves to remind us over and over again what we are not and what we lack of what we should have been but failed to be. Can being fixated on positiv- positivity be a detriment? Yeah. yeah, it comes across as fake sometimes. F- fixating on positivity? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. Like, Do you know what, yeah? Because I don't want to give too much away because there's so much in the book <laughs> and that, like... But just to give a small segment, almost away, because it kind of touches it again throughout, throughout the like, throughout yeah, the book. Yeah. All right, I love yeah, I love someone being around me, being positive, being having a can-do approach. Kind of like, nah, do you know what? Don't let that knock you. Don't let it knock your confidence. Get up. We move on. Mm. Blah blah blah. But my man touched upon it himself later on, without giving too much away. I mean, we'll shit get to happens. Something. Shit yeah. happens, bro. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? You're allowed to feel that like shit sometimes. Yeah. But it's how you deal with feeling like that shit. Don't, do you know what I'm saying? When I read that bit, I started smiling because yeah. it, it just so happened that um, I broke up on the weekend in a relationship. <laughs> Are you not messing up your face? No, no, no. <laughs> but basically, I yeah. ended up at, ended a certain relationship. So I was reading the book, and as I've read that, 
it actually made me smile as I was reading. I was like, that's real shit though. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I do feel a way about it. So, I, obviously, I'm always trying to be positive and have a positive mindset about whatever I'm doing in life. Mm-hmm. But there are moments it's like, yeah, I just I do feel that shit sometimes. I'm like, just accept it for what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And do you know what's mad as well, um, French? Yeah, I, I think we've grown up in similar households where it's like, I, well, I know I was the way I was kind of raised was you just kind of get on with it. Like you don't cry and stuff hit you. That kind of thing. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like almost like protect, like hide your emotions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's like my Mark saying, right? If you want to cry, fucking cry, but yeah, right? you know what I'm saying yeah. like it's funny because yeah. Yeah, I was going to get into that later, so I was actually going to get into that. Um, I just, I mean, all the, I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with having a positive, out, out, positive outlook, and I think it's really important to, I mean, I know in the book, The Secret, which is a completely different book, mm. it kind of focuses on, actually, you need to be positive in order to... Plug. In order to... <laughs> no, I, do you know, I was going to... Bro, I've got... Oh, you got to touch on that? I was okay, gonna, cool. Bro, it's dope. Go yeah, on, no, man. no, I remember, yeah, I'm so like, I don't say I changed my life, but it certainly changed my way of thinking in terms of, actually, you need to be positive, so... Yeah. Um, I forget where I was going, but now things important to be positive. Yeah. But like stuff like negative experience, that's money in the bank. Yeah. It's all money in the bank. I think if you don't, if you don't, um, in terms of you learn from the negative. Yeah, of course you've you got to learn from it. I yeah, mean, yeah, I know yeah. one. I mean, I know these sayings obviously are, are thrown about sometimes, but for me, there's no winning, and losing. There's winning and then there's learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that's I like that. Yeah. What? Are you mean? You know the man with the wisdom. I would, wisdom, like, I, I would like to say I made that up, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what? And mad thing, like I think I've said this to you boys before, maybe on or off it. I can't remember. But and I've said it to a few people that I'm around as well, younger than me actually, about like relationships and it's in relation to relationships. And I've said like when I was younger, I was in a relationship and it ended like and I was quite devastated with the fact that it ended. Mm. But looking back now, I'm so glad I had that experience when I was so much younger. Yeah. Because yeah. now I realise I could deal with that again and how I deal with it. Because dealing with trying to deal with something, if I was in that length of a relationship now. And trying to deal with that because now we're looking at relationships like um, build a home together, children, marriage, whatever. Yeah. And if the relationship that I'm in mean, now for that length of time and that kind of intensity broke down, if if it was the first time this was happening to me, yeah, yeah, I would deal with it a lot worse. I don't know if I could recover. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, be whereas, whereas, that, whereas because I've had that before and I know yeah. I can get it over it, yeah. that doesn't it doesn't scare me if that makes sense. Because you've got a relationship breaking down, like you've got like a navigation as to how you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the fact that. I've got over it before. Yeah. I can do it again. Once yeah. you know it, it's sometimes I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but when you've seen someone do something, you always think, "Well, I know it's doable now." Yeah, yeah, Does that make course. almost? Yeah, almost makes sense. Yeah, it's 100%. like that. Anything else? No, 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 no. I think it's all about know-how. Really. Well, you better go easy on the rumpy. No, that's my. I'll start playing that ambush dub for you. I can't drive in the state. <laughs> I don't want to crush this rent. Well, we still got another <laughs> bottle to kick. <laughs> you mean? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, this will be my last one. The key to a good life is not giving a fuck about more. It's a give, it's giving a fuck about less. Giving a fuck about only what is true and immediate and important. That's page five. The feedback loop from hell. Or let's have... So, I don't know if you guys want to explain the feedback mm-hmm. from hell or do we'll just go for it in terms of ask questions and get mm-hmm. a bit more insightful with it. On page six, he mentions, let's say, or let's say have an anger problem. You get pissed at the most stupidest, most inane stuff and you have no idea idea why. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you get pissed off so easily starts to piss you off even more. Mm-hmm. Um, relatable, any examples? No, I'm just, I'm, I took one little note on this, and I said, I don't suffer from this at all. Like, what? What, in terms of just... Well, what? I'm not going to lie. When I thought of this question, I thought of you. Oh, you you got me twisted from someone else. <laughs> no, so repeat bro. that one more time, because I wrote here, look. I don't have this issue. I wrote nah, it right here. Mace, am I lying? No, Mace, listen, right, listen. Right, you, listen got, you, got, you got a dignified with an example on P. That's the only reason how you can break it down and say, do you know what? Okay, fine, you got to back up. If you're saying you thought of P, then what's the even, reason? Okay, so... I know he's going to say, go on, Karen, but I think Just a wrong. minute ago when we was driving. No, but say, oh, repeat the question. You get <laughs> you get pissed off at the most stupid, inane stuff and you have no idea why and the fact that you get pissed off so easily starts to piss you off even more. Is that relatable? No, oh, so, no, no. no so can I... No, I'm going to break it down. Oh, cool. The first part is correct. Yeah. And the second part of the question was, I don't know why I'm pissed off. Yeah. Or I work... No, that isn't... I know why I'm annoyed. <laughs> that No, I know why I'm annoyed. I, I, I don't think I've ever... I don't think I find myself in a situation where... I'm angry at something and then I don't know understand why I'm angry and then it, it loops around and loops around and I work myself into a frenzy. I can't... I mean, I'm happy for people to say that is me, but I mean, I don't think that is me. But I know that... He, I knew he was going to um, reference 
when we're coming over. <laughs> but things I explained why I was angry, didn't I? Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I explained why I was angry. Advice, fair enough. Said that I've had a hard day and I'm talking quite fast, um, speaking a lot, <laughs> which means that I've I've got a lot on my mind. So, well, yeah, but that's explained. So that's not relatable at all. No, um, no, so, I don't think it's relatable to myself, but I understand like the premise and like what I was mentioned. What about you, Mace? I don't think I suffer from the problem either. I think that's a juvenile thing, but that's a, a real immature trait. So you never just got angry like... No, do you like, know what? Because I, I can it, definitely it, relate. It didn't just relate, relate to, to, to angriness, it related to anxiousness. Okay. And I think, like, I know... Because I'm, I'm still a bit funny with public speaking or speaking, giving a presentation in front of people. Yeah. And I start getting anxious and I'm like, I know this is going to happen and it hap- and it's happening again and I know it's going to happen. Why does it keep happening? I get more anxious thinking about it. Does mm. that make sense? Mm. That happens to me a lot and I'm just like, it's look, the same thing. It's the yeah, same, exact same thing. I know. And I'm just like, why can't, in my head, I'm like, you know you're going to get anxious or you know you're going to get, you're going to get nervous. Yeah. What, what is it that I can't control my nerves when I know it's going to be all right because it always is? Do yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. So that does happen to me that, and that is annoying no I've experienced it and I could just not even say wake up on the bad side of the bed but I don't really think like that but they could, I could just be doing something or just the days going by and I'll just have like a almost a, a dark cloud over me I'll just have a dark cloud over me and I'm just upset for some reason I don't know why I'm just upset and because I don't know why I'm upset it'll get me more upset or more pissed off or just like What's, what's, what's wrong with me like, I'm genuinely pissed off now I'm actually pissed off but I don't know why I'm pissed off and that's pissing me off I've, I've actually experienced I don't that. believe that with yourself the reason why I say that is because I was going to say this to you the other day mm. um, obviously we spoke about one or two bits and pieces off camera and I think over the past three weeks ish yeah. I think you've had a lot on your mind and you haven't navigated your way through them all yeah. to which we've had conversations and stuff like that to which you may have had dark clouds within that past three weeks I'm not even talking about then I'm talking no, but I'm about just giving, exa- yeah, I'm giving yeah, a little examples yeah. um, and because um, I was going to ring you and speak about this actually where oh, you were saying no, you, I can't remember what specifically what you were saying but I'm just giving just yeah, yeah. any type of example yeah, yeah. where oh you've had a bad day blah blah but truth be told you hadn't quite maybe told us about the issues that you were going on yeah, and you were yeah. working them out in your head yeah, moment saying, time that. Yeah, before yeah, you've yeah. actually vocalised them yeah. and sometimes within just say you've been upset for a, not a week but for a long period of time yeah. then you might have bouts where you're just frustrated like ah oh, so today when I've when I've basically bucked you mm. I've to be honest, it was unexpected. I didn't expect to be yeah. ragey or no ragey, but yeah, in that yeah, type yeah. of mood. Yeah. But it was a case of actually for the past four, five days, I've had to be on it, on it, on it, on it, on it, and have another moment to myself. Mm. Whereas the first person I had interaction with, bang, it's been a case of what conversation and I'm venting. Someone's driving past me. Someone's taking too long. It's like, what are you doing? Blah blah blah. Mm. But well, yeah. No, I'm not talking about of recently, but I've definitely, I can definitely relate to it. How long ago? It's been it's been within it's actually happened within the last year I'd say. I'm quite surprised. It's definitely happened within the last year. But it doesn't happen often to a point where I think it's a problem. Okay, cool. But I can relate to it in that regard. Um by not giving a fuck that you feel bad, you short circuit the feedback loop from hell. You say to yourself, I feel like shit, but who gives a fuck? And then as if sprinkled by magic by a magic fuck given fairy dust you stop hating yourself or feeling so bad. And this is the point that I was thinking about, um, like this book kind of reminds me of like the Antichrist of the Secret because it confirms what it says in the secret in reference to having in having the luxury of being able to have thoughts and about our, our thoughts and to, as above, feeling that shit but flipping it on his head. So it's almost like, it's almost like the non-PC way of saying what the secret says. You know what I mean? It is what I felt. Sorry, go on. Because it's, it's saying whatever the secret's saying in terms of okay, so if you're having a negative thought, more negative thoughts are going to come. Yeah. But if you think of positive thoughts and you lean into those positive thoughts, then positive things will happen. So it's not it's not literally saying I'll be your positive, be more positive, but it's saying, look, don't give a shit about it and crack on. Do you know what I mean? I felt what this book brought is brought it brought a lot of balance. Yeah, like a lot of balance, and I thought yeah. it was really, really good. Because I mean, the one thing which I didn't agree with to begin with, it was saying, I think positive things come out of problems, or, or something along those lines. I forget what the exact phrase was. And at first, I didn't really believe it, but then I, as I read or see a bit more through the book, yeah. then I began to understand it, kind of thing. Because it's like um, working hard 
in order to achieve a goal. Obviously, yeah. you have loads of different problems, obviously, within trying to achieve that goal. And then, yeah. bang, you finally achieve that goal. And obviously, a good thing has come from that problem. So I learned to understand it. But again, obviously, with life, it throws so many different type of stuff at you. Um, so many different things at you that um, you are going to encounter problems. I don't think things can be rosy, rosy. But I think it will be helped if you have a po- positive mind frame. But negative things will happen. Yeah, of course. Uh, we joke online about first world problems, but we really have become victims of our own success. Stress-related health issues, anxiety disorders and cases of depression have skyrocketed over the past 30 years despite the fact that everyone has a flat screen TV and can have their groceries delivered. That's on page 8. Are we soft as a generation and if so, what can we do about it? Mm, I've got a couple of viewpoints. One, I I, I think it's you can argue that it's not saying we're soft it's exposure it's awareness of what's going on around us you click into your Instagram profile you're going to see someone with, in an amazing pool on some rooftop in the middle of Mexico with these mountains raging you can be like oh I've just been to work and come home to my council flat or whatever mm. and then the other thing is and I've said this before maybe our, the generation before us and the generation before that they were tougher than us but, but they were more hard headed but that could also be linked to the lack of awareness or I've got a job to do, let me just get my children raised, that's my job done. I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard one. So repeat the question again. Are we soft as a generation? And if so, what can we do about it? Um, I think we're definitely soft as a generation. I know it goes in. Into... Why did you say that? That's a sweeping statement. Um, yeah, again, obviously, sorry, I was saying... Um, yeah, no, I think we're definitely soft of a generation. I think it goes it's in... It's a sweeper statement. I love to speak them, you know what I mean? I'm just finishing the sentence, finish the sentence and then just... You know what I'm if you don't... <laughs> Sips his drink. Anyway, so yeah, I believe we That's are... That's none of the, my business. Yeah, so I think we are soft of a generation. I think the reasons, the reasons being, I think um, each generation has, I think, made it, made it... In fact, each generation has been afforded the luxury to make it easier for the following generation to obviously kind of like um, make that path easier for them in terms of growing up or avoiding this problem or that problem. To the point, I think a lot of people have got entitlement. I mean, I know Mason's obviously mentioned Instagram and social media and stuff like that. I think those those things don't help, but we spoke about the secret in terms of um, positivity um, and also spoke about negativity and stuff like that. I think yeah. a lot of these things don't mirror what life is about yeah that's true. I think these are the best things these are the, your front foot forward and I think yeah. in doing so it can provide um, emotions and thoughts of I don't say jealousy as such because I don't I, I'm not talking about myself but I mean jealousy may be an emotion, not jealousy as such I think it's what am I doing with my life that kind of thought yeah it kind of throws out that mirror yeah, and it, yeah, 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 yeah it, it can make you soft yeah I think we've been afforded luxuries in um, our generation being given a, a path an easier path than previous generations I think with some of the stuff which we're afforded nowadays, yeah, I think we, I think we are definitely, we're definitely soft. But you know what? I'm sure around this page, I might be mistaken, French. The mention is about like, oh, we've also got things where textbooks are taken out of circulation in schools because of because a student don't like it. Yeah, yeah so I've experienced like, yeah, that, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I forget. So you yeah, both, no, yeah, you mind mentioning? Yeah, you both used to work in schools. Yeah, so you worked in the education first, system. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I've when we were um, working in this particular school it was like a behaviour school like whatever ED, EBD it was emotional behaviour disorder school yeah yeah yeah. one of those schools but basically I was working I was, I was covering a teacher so I was being the teacher for the lesson and um, I must have been reading out something to a stu- well reading out to the class and having a, like a, a debate with, with the, some of the students and I've said something to the student or said something to the class or one particular student that was, was going back to back for, in front of the whole class but it wasn't nothing um, it wasn't heated it was just we're just going back and forth mm. and another kid that I wasn't even talking to didn't like what I said so he's told his mum and the mum's made a complaint and I got a warning for how old are these kids? these kids are about 14, 15 14, 15 and bro like it's them ages that like, I even had another a female student and because one of her things on her profile was she gets fixated on people either she really likes them or she really doesn't like that doesn't like them and I was one of those people that she really didn't like for whatever yeah. reason no particular reason of my own or wrongdoing but she just took it that she didn't like me so <laughs> it got to a problem where I had to leave the classroom and work in another class just because do you know what I mean? It's like the, the entitlement, they can just say this and 
everything gets changed on their behalf. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as I said, I got a, I got a warning for saying something. I wasn't even speaking directly to this particular student, but whatever I said, he didn't like it, mm-hmm. or the way I said it, and I've got a warning for it. I'd left the school. I'd already I was already leaving the school anyway. Mm-hmm. But it was just like when when the guy the teacher told me he was he was pissed that he even had to tell me. He was just like, I have to tell you this, but this is what the situation is. And I was like, cool, wasn't it? He's like, don't say cool, because it's not cool. Because yes. <laughs> he was pissed, he was pissed, but he had to tell me. But um, yeah, that's, that's 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 where we are though, man. I had a conversation with someone probably two, three weeks ago, um, a passenger, where um, she was a teacher. Mm. And I forget where she taught, whether it was in a secondary school, primary school, or a university. But I think it was a university, like a, a very good university. I'm talking about like, I don't say private, but somewhere along those lines. Yeah. And... Um, somewhere along the line we start talking about entitlement Mm. and some of the things that she mentioned in particular with this generation where she feels a bit dumbfound was where kids don't necessarily have to work hard for something maybe kids don't have to work hard for something but I'll I'll go to I'll come to the conclusion and we'll work back Mm. where she's been in situations where a kid has probably not worked hard for their grade or has not got a good grade They've gone home and gone home and told mum or dad. Mm. Mum or dad has come in and she's been forced to change that grade. And that's that's sorry yeah. This is normal, yeah, it's sorry. normal bro. Normal. That's the teacher's been forced to change the grade. Yes. Even though yeah, yes. mar- the teacher is marking by yes. a criteria and they yes. haven't met that criteria yes. to this get this, a sorry, this is higher education. This is not no primary. No, this, this, is, this is higher this, education. That's ridiculous. Higher education. That's ridiculous. Bro, that's, that's I just forget what it was. Though. Like, make, bro, one complaint, the teacher, they, they can't do nothing. I remember I sat, I, this is, and this is again going back to the same school that I was in. And that, um, the same teacher that he was, he was basically the teacher that told me that I got a warning for that that incident was the deputy head. So basically, the class that I had was a bit of a problem class, and I took to taking notes down, like writing notes, literally just write down everything that's going on. So when this particular student got in trouble, I had all the notes basically by minute by minute by minute what he's doing, what he's not doing, whatever what not, and they've they've asked me to attend the meeting, and obviously this particular parent normally bads them up in it yeah but i think uh, yeah probably because she she was a black woman as well the student was a black you obviously they've, they're they're doing, having their dialogue and i'm basically on the site I'm, I'm on the turf so to speak so they said oh so like what's what's been going on and i said all right cool well this is what it is at 9 50 blah 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 he done this 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 and this at 10 past 10 he done this this and this and this and they didn't have a leg to stand on, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really a case of she can now make a big deal and get things changed around. Whereas before she would have hotted him up and mm-hmm. he would have got the best of it. But because I was in that situation, I was able to be like, okay, well, this is the case. He was doing this and he actually was doing that. Like, it's not really, it is for him to kind of fix up the way he's conducting himself. Mm-hmm. But if that wasn't the situation, where I hadn't taken them notes and it would have been his story against theirs and her being a parent would have backed probably... Him, yeah. So, let me say backed him. He, 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 whatever she demanded, they would have almost had to give in to. And that's what happens on a daily basis in schools, bro. <laughs> like a lot of the time. A lot of the time. I'm not going to say every single time because that's, that's, again, that's a black <laughs> statement. But a lot of the time, those things happen, man. I don't... I mean, you know, I hate this winner. Not a winner gets all. So everyone, everyone gets a medal. Everyone gets a medal. Um, I want to call it a concept. Yeah. And I know there's a segment in the book where he goes back and I think he explains. I'm gonna say I'm gonna throw up a, a time period where in the 70s or 60s, I think um, they brought in a thing where yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they brought in a thing where they felt that um, I think well, I'm gonna say your mind frame yeah. was key to dare I say being successful as such. Yeah. So they brought things in such as. Um, everyone, everyone gets a medal and all that type of stuff. To mm. which brings about, I think he said it brought about. I think he was saying we're now in the time period where we're a recipient of what we did back then. Where yeah. now everyone, everyone believes they're entitled, they're entitled to this, yeah. that, and the third. And yeah. I think, I think it's terrible, man. I mean, in working in schools, sorry, yeah, just in working in schools, just the, the, just the entitlement and the things, not the things in kids say, but just their behaviour and their manners and stuff like that. It just it just throws me off, man. It yeah. really does. Yeah, no, it's true. It's, it is a entitlement generation. I do think technology has played a big part. Well, social media has played a bigger part in um, 
making it worse. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I know it mentions in the book that like um, the introduction of let's say the internet and social media, but I'm gonna say the internet more so mm. has made it a lot easier to access information. But it's probably on the flip side um, brought a lot of like psychological issues to which now we now have to deal with. Yeah. I mean, to which obviously we, we we discuss obviously social media and stuff like that, where people are now getting access to <clears throat> images to which they're probably pondering as to. Why can't I have that? Or I wish my life was like that, and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, I think because of the cycle, the uh, um, psycho, uh, not psycho, the the dynamic mm. where people are not as confident as they should be. Mm-hmm. I mean, people resorting to things such as I know they spoke about drugs and all that type of stuff in his book, but people resorting to things like that, and it doesn't have to, it doesn't necessarily have to be all that way. All what, sorry is sorry all the way in that direction in terms of taking drugs but just being affected by it and not having that thing now yeah yeah definitely quick quick no work required um, further on down it do, he does mention because here's the thing here's the thing that's wrong with all the how to be happy shit that's been shared 8 million times on Facebook in the past few years bless you here's what nobody realises about all this crap the desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience and paradoxically the accepting of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience do you understand that? Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah the acceptance of one negative experience is itself a positive experience Porker, you touched on this earlier yeah go on so the, the statement is the desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience I understand, yes. I understand that too and paradoxically paradoxically Mm. The acceptance of one negative experience is itself a positive experience. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, and I, I, I just want to see if you understood it. Yeah, because yeah, Poker, you broke it down nicely yeah. earlier, where you can learn from a negative experience and yeah. ter- and turn it into a positive That's going so forward. Yeah. Whereas if you're always seeking out a positive experience. It's like it's almost like you won't be. You're never happy. You're missing. You're missing. Yeah, you're missing something. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You're missing something from your, like there's something in your life that you feel like that it's actually linked back to you feeling like you're missing something from your life. Yeah. That goes on to the story, the story of Buddha, which we're gonna m- mention as well. So, so it's before this is why I say, I always say yeah, it's good, like strive for more, strive to be better, but just look around you and be and also take in what you have because there's so many people that don't have what you have. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think a good excerpt that I was reading another past on on page 11 where he mentions what's interesting about the backwards law and that's what that last statement was it's, a back, it's called the backwards law by Alan Watts um, I've been reading watching a few videos on YouTube it's quite interesting but, by um, who? Adam Watts? Alan, Alan Watts Alan Watts sir. yeah speaks a lot about uh, energy and positivity things that a lot of the things that get mentioned in The Secret but obviously he's he's said this backwards law, which makes a lot of sense as well. What's interesting about the backwards law is that it's called backwards for a reason. Not giving a fuck works in reverse. If pursuing the positive is a negative, then the pursuing the mind the, the negative generates the positive. Pain in gym equals better all round health. Failure in business equals better understanding of what's needed to be successful. Being open with your insecurities paradoxically makes you more confident and charismatic around others. The pain of honest confrontation is what generates the greatest trust and respect in your relationships. These moments of non-fuckery are the moments that most define our lives. Can you have a non-fuckery moment? Can you have non-fuckery moments with attachments? Now, there was a reason why I asked that, but I don't know if it's a Ray talking, but I can't remember the reason behind that question. So, we can move on with that. But, um, I don't know if it's in this chapter where he talks about Buddha. You just mentioned it just a moment ago in terms of the backwards law. Like, sorry, sorry, non fuckery sorry, repeat that one more time. Which bit? Um, the part you were just talking about. These moments of non fuckery are the moments that most define our lives. Yeah, so no, I, I definitely like, so I wrote bits and pieces, quite a lot of wrote over this in regards yeah, to, so, um, I don't know where to start really. Um, so the moments of non-fuckery are the moments that define you major switch in careers the spontaneous choice to do something um, what's the worst that can happen if you decide to do so just weigh it up 
I've had so many, of me personally, I've had so many excuses about um, in the past about my job or if I don't do this, this opportunity may not come up again. I've had so many. So when I've gone traveling and stuff like that, um, I've had conversations with people and they've told me, I can never do that because if I do that, my job won't yes. be here. I've heard it so many times. It's, 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 like, so many times. Um, yeah. And to be honest, I understand some of the things they're, they're throwing up. Yeah. Um, but for me, I think in, in traveling and in doing it myself, I often, often found, you know what, actually, this is a lot better than being in your job and so on and so forth. But, I mean, I know he goes on to... Um, in fact, he never said, actually, where he was living and such, but he does throw up Mark something... Manson. Yeah, but I know he throws up something about moving to South America. So, like, in regards to non-fucking moments, um, achieving extraordinary things... Uh, sorry, he, sorry. In doing non-fucking things, I think you can go on to achieve or see extraordinary things. That's why I asked the question. Cool. So okay. let me just finish very quickly and then <laughs> bang. So that's why I, I paused you there for a second because I thought that's what you were going on to. So achieving extraordinary things, I'm selling most of my possessions and moving to South America. Um, I know there's, as I mentioned, I know there's a balance um, because I believe um, you have to manage things um, which involve giving a fuck. Um, but believe you cannot live your best life given several fucks. To live an extraordinary life, you have to do things differently. And extraordinary, sorry, it's very quick. On extraordinary, I mean, I think so many people live an ordinary life, and sometimes people say the word ex- extraordinary in one word. But when I'm thinking of the word extra- extraordinary, I actually say it in two words extraordinary, as in yeah. going beyond the norm, going beyond the norm. Yeah, but bro, 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 we'll probably come on to this. What Mark Manson is preaching is nothing wrong with living an ordinary life. I know that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the thing is, so what I'm saying and he's is. saying that those that strive for this in inverted commas extraordinary life are the ones who actually are like are missing something are feeling like feeling empty and there's something missing I'm not saying you're wrong no no but this is because we're focused on this book I'm just saying what he's pointing out in this like, a lot of not giving a fuck I'm not going to say necessarily this thing here because what I'm so what I'm saying is people I think the problem with us oh, so we're going to my travelling example for example mm-hmm. right so um, I've gone travelling and then I've had my conversation with people afterwards in regards to these are my experience so on and so forth yeah. I'm saying is people far too often care about I've got this I've got this responsibility I've got this responsibility and so on and so forth whereas I don't see the bigger picture actually not that you necessarily can come back to that but there's so many different other opportunities out there for you if you actually not necessarily branch off but actually just stop giving so many F's about this that and the third so I hope that makes any sense yeah that makes sense it does I mean, again, going back to the question, I think I don't know what gave me that the click mo- light bulb moment when I asked the question. I said, "Can you have non fuckery moments um, with attachments?" Meaning, can you do those kind of like, "All right, cool, I'm just gonna move away randomly and travel for five weeks" when you've got attachments? So you've got a partner in tow, or you've got maybe a child, or things of that such nature are you are you almost anchored down by these attachments see I'm, so I mentioned this moments ago what is the worst that can happen so it's very quickly I'm gonna maybe maybe you can answer that what's the I'm, see, I'm, I'm not surprised you don't look like that actually no or you, no, no, no I look like that because of the last two things French said which was a child and a, and a, and a wife or girlfriend oh, well, that, I'm not surprised you said that actually a now, child def, now I'm def, no no, no it's a wife or pa- a partner alright yeah. so we've been discussing like partners yeah. that not too long ago alright yeah. cool so most of us struggle through our lives <laughs> <laughs> well, no no them okay cool yeah. uh, no, most, I, most I, of us I, struggle I, through, I don't know I stopped, okay but. most of us struggle through our lives by giving too many fucks that's why people remain stagnant years on and wonder what happened and where the time went mm. okay so sorry our, our, our conversation was on sorry just for what moment momentarily um, the question was um, disappearing or going away for five minutes going away for yeah. five weeks or what have you yeah. and would like, you what, call, yeah but would you call like is there too many French raised some good examples what's the worst that can happen that no, was my question he raised some good examples if you've got because obviously you're not tied down with a child with a wife you can do that what he's saying is you've got your man sorry your man you've got your everyday man who's got a wife and a child at home and in his head he's like do you know what I want to, pee, I want to pee off for five I want to piss off for five I know someone who has but go on and he's got a child in that home he, had, he has a child and he do you not wife. think that that's irresponsible do you not think that for me I know some, maybe I'm wrong it's going to sound less manly to me like take care of your ish at home Rupert. haven't we spoken about actually um, having to want to take breaks and stuff like that before just, just, I'm just throwing it out there yeah. and yeah, actually it being about. something that your partner should actually be understanding yeah, 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 I'm definitely. just throwing it out there yeah. we've had this conversation Bro, before yeah, yeah, for me if you've yeah. got a 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 year old at home you think I'm just fucking off for 5 months that's selfish well, you said five, we, said, we said 5 weeks you're throwing 5 months now you, say five you months? said 5 weeks. Said 5 weeks I thought you said 5 months you said 5 yeah. weeks no in an example I said 5 weeks Five weeks is too long. 
If you've got a young, if you've got a child at home, and you've got your woman. Five weeks is too long. What so do you what, think, so to go away, I think at that point it would be very hard to do that. It'd be very hard. Um, I think you can, depending on again, depend <laughs> depending on how strong the relationship is and what your bond. What with if you've got child. a child at home? I think even with a child, like if you if you actually need to do this to make yourself That's a better person, mention. if it means you going away, say when I was, I was listening to a podcast, I can't remember the guy's name, but basically. He went away to live with some monks for um, a period of time, and in that time, he was he he needed to have that time for whatever reason. To did his family wait for him? Yeah, of course they did. They did. They, they the wife was understanding, and that, that she's on the same page. That's, that's good. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the point. Yeah, that's she was on. Un, she was on the same page. Yeah. They was financially so secure, so mm. it wasn't a case of they they're living pay, paycheck to paycheck. So that all of those issues wasn't in, in the in the formula. So he needed his time to go away, get within himself, meditate, find himself, so to speak. And he was able to come back and be a better husband and be a better father. So for me, would I would I do that with a child and a partner at home? If I needed to do it, I thought it was necessary. I wouldn't just go on a random five weeks and just mm-hmm. go have a laugh. In Bali, boy. <laughs> and just do, do what I'm doing. It would have to have a specific yeah, reason yeah, behind yeah. it. So right, if so I would do it if necessary. Yeah, all right, definitely. so say, all right, if I'm, for three months, I've been acting a drunkard or alcoholic, and guess what? Six weeks away, I'm going to clean myself. Whatever, if it had, like, you're right, if I have a specific reason, obviously, if my wife, or my girlfriend, and my family want to see the best of me return, then I think they'll be all for it. Mm. I just think, say like, oh, I beef for summer season. No, but I think that's quite different. Though. That's, <laughs> that's different. Yeah, that's I beef for summer season. That's different. No, six that's weeks. Different. That's totally different. What, I shower and I'm having six weeks off, love. Yeah, you look after, you look after the little ones. No, I think that's, 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 right, so that's taking the pee. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that's a different kind of, that's a different vibe. But yeah, from the perspective where I was coming from, I think that's adequate. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, obviously, we, you spoke about partner and stuff. I mean, you've kind of said it anyway. Um, gone, yeah, you've said it anyway that your partner to be partner will need to be understanding. I mean, I know this doesn't necessarily happen all the time, but I like to believe the person that you're either setting down with and having kids will kind of understanding that. I mean, for me personally, I think traveling has become now I'm a big part of my life to the point where obviously I'm going away in four or five weeks, kind of thing, mm. and. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll definitely bring it up. It's, it's really, really important to me in terms of getting away and um, just being in tune with myself. So if that person then became, um, I'll say, not understanding if I wanted a small break, a break away from life, yeah. I'd find it difficult for that person to understand. I think that per- I'd, I'd look at that person a bit sideways. Why didn't that person understand? I've mentioned this before. It's not like it's <laughs> unusual. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like it's unusual. If you look back at the pattern of my life, I've gone, I've gone away like... I've, I've, I've well, done these things not to kind of very rough actually to know I'm not even going to get into it no we can do I mean we can do just a tad just two minutes go on <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to point out one or two things anyway Jesus alright so say you're in a relationship alright cool you're cool. in a three month relationship <laughs> easy go on <laughs> so you've been in a relationship for three months and easy you, <laughs> go on you then want to go away for whatever it is three four weeks it's we fine. Can. That's a walk in the park. It's fine. I don't even know why it's being raised. Yeah. <laughs> Say again? I don't even know why it's being raised. Yeah, no, that's no, it's fine. Yeah, you already know. It's, it's fine. Why do you sound so... I don't know. Like, this is a weird one. We've gone from five weeks to two or three weeks. <laughs> no family, just a three-month relationship. You sound nervous, bro. No, no. Yeah, I know. And you know, I was going to mention something the other day. I was going to mention something. All right, so like... Go on. What was the rest of that Buddha stuff? <laughs> <laughs> So I was what, what's that Buddha so, like, yeah. Mason, you go away quite a lot, all right? You go away quite a lot. Do you believe... I mean, I'm not going to go too deep into it, actually, all right? Um, do you believe you can curb your... I'm going to say activity, not in naughty activity, I'm talking about just activity in terms of going away, um, because now you have a partner. We're generalising here, right? Yeah, we are generalising. Yeah, OK, go on. Um, I think... Yeah, but I think it's on them ones. You can... You can you can go away still with your mates, but obviously you don't have to incorporate chips with your partner if that's what they're into also. And I think if I think you'd be drawn to someone who also likes to travel anyway. If that's your personality, you'd probably be drawn to someone who likes okay, to travel. Okay, and what have you not? Because I've had conversations I've had conversations with people where they've said but, oh, I'm, I'm saying, I've had yeah. conversations with people where they've said, 
oh, I'm not too sure I can do that now, now that I'm in a relationship. Yeah, I've got a good friend like that, boy. Yeah, I know. So what would you say to people like that? I would say that you could still go away, but obviously, but if, by yourself, if, you're, if you're used to going you away by yourself all the time, now you've got someone on board, mm. you'd probably meet someone who, prob- the likelihood is you're going to be with someone who, you know, you've got similar interests. So they'd probably like going away as well. And but I'm sure you specifically you could... want to go away by yourself. I don't think in that a relationship. Be... Do you think that yeah. it, that would that wouldn't arise in a problem? It depends on the on your under, the understanding of the person you're with, I suppose. Yeah. But if yeah, it's yeah. something as you've documented, if something you've done in your history and in your past, then they need to understand that sometimes you just want to clear your head for four or five days, or you want to go and experience stuff by yourself. Cool. Very very quick. We've had like cool. Yeah, go on. We, we've had um <laughs> we've had we've had um yeah. heated co- conversations off air in regards to my stances. <laughs> I don't think I was involved. But anyway, I think you were. Yeah, go on. I, as to my stances, I'm raising the tone now. All right. Yeah. Go as on. to my stances, what I'm saying is, oh, you almost made me forget my question. What if that person was not on the same page as you. What do you do? Well, if you want to go away by yourself. One. Fred, what's your thoughts? Um, if it's important for me, you're going to have to keep it stepping. As in... The relationship, on, if the relationship yeah. can't withstand, withstand the fact that I'm going to want to go by, away by myself mm. and I've been doing it, mm-hmm. then yeah, then it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, I agree with Fred. Ditto. Hmm. <laughs> we're all on the same page did I anyone know. did anyone because there's before we go on to chapter 2 mm. uh, there is three pointers that he makes about uh, the subtlety and there's I think there's, he does, there's I... three of them I'm, I'm sure P would have noted them down so very quickly let me just find him there. I know the first one If whilst you're looking for it the first one is not giving a fuck does not mean being indifferent if mean if means being comfortable with it means being comfortable with being different so uh, do you want to yeah go ahead yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so not giving a fuck me sorry not giving a fuck means being indifferent and being comfortable with being indifferent and with the example he gave with regards to taking on the person who screwed his mum out of a large amount he used the word indignant which means annoyance at a level of injustice people who fight bullies or the establishment <clears throat> not worried about the repercussions because wrong is wrong there are many sorry there are many in that respect um, those who make sorry those who make sacrifices whether it's social financial or what have you for the greater good.